Good afternoon, class. We are looking at practice test number four for pre-calculus, module four, covering chapter eight, application of trigonometry, polar coordinates and vectors. Here's chapter eight, part two, covering polar coordinates and vectors. Polar coordinates and vectors. Plot the points in polar coordinates, minus two comma zero, one comma pi over two. So first reminding everyone, here's the polar uh, axis. Uh, you can think of it as the X axis, here's the pole. And when we want to represent a pair, we represent with two things. We represent it with a distance from the origin. In this case, we're gonna call it pole. And the angle that it makes, with the x-axis or the polar axis. So polar axis, the same as x-axis, origin is the same as the pole. And in order to plot points, first and foremost, come up with theta. In this case, theta is zero degrees. So it's along this uh, x-axis or polar axis going one and two on the opposite side. That's extremely important to understand when it's negative two. So positive here, negative there. So that's what we have here. And negative two zero is on the negative side or opposite side of that. For this one, pi over two, uh, in essence on the y axis, if you will, pi over two or 90 degrees, and you go one unit up. So that would be the graph. Find other polar coordinates for uh, part B one comma pi over two. So there are uh, infinitely many polar coordinates giving us the same answer, unlike you know, uh, the uh, Cartesian coordinates. So uh, because you know, when we add 2k pi, we end up with the same value. So if we want this uh, r to be positive, theta be between negative 2 pi and zero, what do we get when, when we want r to be negative, theta be between zero and two pi, r being positive between two pi and four pi. So let me go over the uh, general idea. Any point with coordinates r comma theta can be also represented with r and theta plus two k pi, or sometimes they call it two n pi. k is an integer, i stands for integer, meaning zero, one, two, three, two, infinity, and negative one, negative two on the negative side. So this means 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, that's a set of integers. If you want to represent this with a negative r, you add an odd multiple of pi. I hope you realize 2k means even multiple of pi. So you put 2k pi and add another pi. So when we go here, uh, we want it to be negative. So all we have to do is subtract 2 pi. And we come up with uh, 1 and negative 3 pi over 2. If we want 1 to be uh, negative, then we can add just pi or 3 pi over 2 or 5. Uh, 3 pi, I mean, or 5 pi and so forth. So just we add a pi here because we are making this negative, they add up and it becomes a 3 pi over 2 uh, between 2 pi and 4 pi. So let's add 2 pi to this number, pi over 2. It's 1 and 5 pi over 2. Clearly 5 pi over 2 is larger than 2 pi. So it's in the area of uh, interest. Plot the points first, then find their coordinates. So 6 comma 150 degrees. So that means you go 150 degrees and then you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you go 150 degrees. 150 degrees. And then you count six of those. Okay. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, those circles, let's say, hold our grip. Now, let's remind everybody that when it comes to polar represented with r comma theta, rectangular represented with x comma y, the relationship x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So 6 cosine of pi over 6 and cosine of pi over 6, pi over 6 is the reference r which makes the cosine positive square root of three over two, phi pi over six. Second quadrant makes it negative because cosine is negative in that quadrant, minus three square root of three. Uh, y equals r sine theta and sine of phi pi over six is the same as sine of pi over six and it's positive because in the second quadrant sine is positive and it's one half. So six times one half makes it three, therefore, 6 comma 150 degrees in polar form is the same as negative 3 square root of 3 comma 3 in rectangular form. Find the polar coordinates uh, for this rectangular form of 2 comma negative 2. So we want to go back. So first, it's a really good practice to locate that 2 to the right, 2 down puts you somewhere there. And rectangular, we want to go to polar. We remember x squared plus y squared is r squared, and then tan theta is y over x. But you always have to uh, adjust for the quadrant. Okay, so in this case, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So 2 squared and negative 2 squared, 4 and 4 is 8. So r is 2 squared of 2. Tan is y over x and it becomes negative one, and theta becomes negative pi over four. So r is two square root of three, theta is minus pi over two. So this pair in rectangular form is this pair in polar form. If we are interested in finding a positive value, and normally, normally, uh, this should be positive, this should be positive, otherwise, uh, uh, unless otherwise mentioned, you add a two pi to this, becomes 7 pi over 4, so 7 pi over 4. Transform the polar equation, r cosine theta equals negative 2 to an equation in rectangular coordinate, so we can uh, recognize it. So r cosine theta is negative 2 on the one hand. On the other hand, we know x is r cosine theta. Therefore, since these two are the same, x must be equal to negative 2, and that makes it a VL, a vertical line. So we recognize that as a vertical line. Uh, 2 cosine theta. Now we want to uh, perform work on R equals 2 cosine theta. So remember x is r cosine theta, r squared is x squared plus y squared. And now we are given r equals two cosine theta. So there is a, a trick involved and we are going to multiply both sides by r because of this. So this becomes r squared, this becomes two r cosine theta. And r squared is x squared plus y squared two r cosine theta is x, so this is replaced with x. Okay, r squared is 2x and x squared plus y squared is 2x. And now, what do we do on the left side? We bring the 2x to the left, and we are going to put these two together, and we are going to complete this square. b is negative 2 divided by two, square that. This is completing this square. So add one to both sides. So this becomes x minus one quantity squared. As you recognize this, this is the equation of a circle centered at one comma zero with the radius of square root of one, which is one, again, reminding you of the following formula.
x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Equation of a circle. So it's centered at one comma zero. And looking like that. What about R cosecant theta equals eight? Uh, we may notice that cosecant is one over sine. So we can say R over sine theta is eight and therefore R is eight sine theta. Let's multiply both sides by R. So we get r squared equals eight r sine theta. r squared is x squared plus y squared. And r sine theta is y. So we're gonna replace the r squared with x squared plus y squared equals eight times, we're gonna replace the r sine theta with y. We're going to move the 8y and we're going to complete this square as follows. B is negative 8 divided by 2. Squared. Add it to both sides. This is what you get. It's a circle which is centered at zero four with the radius of square root of 16, which gives you four. So we go four unit up the y axis in essence, one, two, three, four. And then you draw a circle. So it's a circle centered at zero four with the radius four. You want to identify the graphs. R equals four. Uh, it's very easy. All you have to do is square that. R squared equals 16. And you uh, recognize that as X squared plus Y squared equals 16. It's a circle centered at zero, zero with the radius of uh, four. So reminding you of X squared plus Y squared plus R squared, the center is at zero, zero. So that's what it is. Theta equals three pi over four. The technique is to take a tangent of both sides. Tangent of the left is equal to tangent of the right, and this becomes a number. Uh, in this case, tan of pi over four is positive one, three pi over four is negative one. And that's important to notice. Even if it's not a common arc, it's some number. This is a constant. It's some sort of a number that you put, and you know tan theta is y over x. So cross product gives you y equals minus x, which means it's a line through the origin, or in this case, pole, y equals x goes this way, y equals minus x goes this way, just to remind you. So it's a line through the origin or pole. When I identify the graph, uh, R sine theta, and again, we look at this one, R sine theta is Y. So Y equals negative three is a horizontal line. R cosine theta is X. So X is four, it's a vertical line. So 
So R sine theta equals a number, any number. It's a horizontal line. R cosine theta equals any number is a vertical line. So what we learned uh, in short, R equals any number is a circle centered at the pole or the origin. Uh, R sine theta equals a number is a horizontal line. R cosine theta equals a number is a number, a vertical line. If theta is given, then the line becomes y equals tan of that times x. So that's a line that goes through the origin. If R sine theta is a number, we have y equals a, which is a horizontal line. If it's R cosine theta equals a, x equals a, which is a vertical line. Um, R equals, let's say, remember we had uh, R cosine theta, let's say 2a cosine theta. Then R equals a centered at a zero. If it's negative 2a, same R centered at minus a zero. If it's 2a sine theta, in other words, cosine, okay, it's along the x axis. Sine is along the y axis. That's what those are all about. I remind you of symmetry in polar coordinates, uh, symmetry with respect to WRT, short for with respect to the polar axis. If in the polar equation of our theta, we can replace uh, R uh, theta with R minus theta resulting in an equivalent equation, the graph is symmetric with respect to the uh, polar axis. In essence, uh, the uh, X axis, you can think of it. Symmetry with respect to line theta equals pi over two or Y or um, axis. If the polar equation, when we have R, R of theta can be replaced with R pi minus theta, the graph is symmetric with the with respect to the line theta equals pi over two. You can think of it as the y axis. As far as the polar, the origin is concerned, if in the polar equation R theta can be replaced with minus R theta or R and comma theta plus pi, the graph is symmetric with respect to the pole. And uh, these are some graphs again uh, symmetric with respect to the polar axis. See? with the uh, you know, uh, y axis, namely theta equals pi over two. And with respect to the original pole, if you will, the concept of an odd function comes to mind here. So how do we graph a polar graph in general? Well, we start with theta. And all you have to just look at some uh, common arcs. For example, uh, again, uh, reminding everybody that's a cardioid. Uh, if R is A times one plus minus cosine theta, R is A times one plus minus sine theta is positive passes through the point. But in any event, the graph, uh, for example, zero. If I plug in zero here, cosine of zero is one. One minus one gives me uh, zero because I'm going to write the value for this one, which is zero. Pi over six, uh, pi over six, you know, this is a uh, cosine of pi over six or square root of three over two. Uh, pi over four, this is square root of two over two, so one minus that. Pi over uh, three, and this is one half, so one minus one half. Pi over two, cosine is zero, so one minus zero over one. Uh, two pi over three, so in the second quadrant, now we are dealing with a negative value. So it's minus negative one half, which makes it three halves. If you plug in pi, it's a negative one times negative makes it positive one, one and one makes it two. So we should be able to come up with those nice and easy. And then we're gonna write them in this fashion. And remember what I told you, we start with the angle first, although we represent R first and then angle first, so zero, zero. So that means if, if I wanted to have a rough sketch here, so I would have zero, zero here. Now, uh, I wanna go with easy numbers. First, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, easy numbers. So I see this one. Because if I wanna go with um, this one, I have to put it into a calculator and evaluate it. Okay, square root of three is about 1.73 divided by two. 
is almost 0.85, one minus 0.85 is 0.50, just to give you an idea. That's why I wanna go with the easy numbers. Uh, so we have pi over three, okay? So we go with uh, pi over uh, three or 60 degrees and uh, one half. Again, this may not be to scale. Actually, I think it becomes sort of here. Okay. No, it was one half. It was one half, so it's down there. Okay. So again, assuming uh, this is one half. Okay. Uh, pi over two one. This is easy. This is easy. Uh, pi over two one is somewhere here. Um, this is not too bad either because it's three halves or uh, 1.5. So somewhere here. And then pi and two is somewhere here. So it looks, this is, this is you know, not to scale. It looks something like that. Okay. Now I can continue. I can continue and I go to the third quadrant and fourth quadrant and I'm gonna come up with the answer. Also, you may recognize that if you rep uh, replace data with negative data, you get to the same answer, which means it's symmetric with uh, respect to the uh, polar axis, okay? Which means just repeat this one with respect to the X axis. So write the same thing. So this and then this. So with that, you don't have to calculate anything. So it looks going back. Let me do it again. Okay. Again, by no means this is to scale. However, if you want to plug in four pi over three in the third quadrant, one minus cosine of four pi over three, which is negative one half, one minus negative one half makes it three halves. At uh, three pi over two, it's zero. One minus that makes it one. Uh, five pi over three, again, easy numbers in the fourth quadrant. Uh, cosine is positive, so it's positive one half. One minus positive one half is one half. And two pi or zero, that gives you one. One minus one is zero. So you can plug those. So look at the graph, of course, spine is way off. So that's how you graph it by plotting enough points. Uh, plot the complex number one plus i in the complex plane and write it in polar form and write theta in degrees. All right, let's uh, remind everybody of uh, z equals x plus y i or r cis theta, which is r cosine theta, r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, r squared is x squared plus y squared. The modulus or the um, magnitude of z is r or square root of x squared plus y squared. Tan theta is y over x. It's very similar to what we have studied so far. So to give you an idea, this is the x-axis, which is called now the real axis. This is the y-axis, which is called the imaginary axis. So in this case, uh, so uh, and, and if z is x plus i y, sometimes they use z bar or c star is x minus i y. Those are complex conjugates, okay? Complex conjugates, reminding everybody of uh, what we have uh, learned. So uh, first and foremost, uh, let's do some calculations. Or as far as the point is concerned, this is one and one because this is 
If it's five I, you would say one and five here, for example. So this is so many I's, okay? In this case, I represents the imaginary line. So one and one, that's the location that is plugging it. Again, that would be the coefficient of I. So as far as just the pair is concerned, this point would be one comma one. That's how you write this, okay? Uh, that's how you locate this. So this is your uh, real axis, this is your imaginary axis. And so we want to write it in polar format. So let's find R, which is square root of two. Uh, tan, tan theta is y over x, and theta becomes 45 degrees. They wanted us to put it in degrees. And so z, which is one plus i, is also r cis theta. Now, r cosine theta plus i sine theta, where we replace it with 45 degrees. And a shorthand notation for this would be Okay, so quickly I want to explain. Instead of writing cosine 45 plus I sine 45, they put C instead of cosine, I for here, S instead of sine, and then 45 degrees. So R cis theta, R cis theta is the shorthand notation, everyone. Write the complex number four times cosine of seven pi over four plus i sine of seven pi over four in rectangular form. And again, we are aware of that. And plot the complex um, number. Let's start uh, with the uh, Evaluating, uh, we know seven pi over four is a common arc, just like pi over four. So cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two. Sine of pi over two is also square root of two, two over two, but this one is negative because it's in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. Two square root of two minus two square root of two i. So what happens is that we are going to go with seven pi over four. Theta is seven pi over four. Here's the location. So two square root of two to the right. By the way, square root of two is about 1.42 times, that is 2.8. So roughly 2.8 on this side, 2.8 down, just to give you an idea. Again, this is about 1.4. So this is about 2.8, okay. Find ZW and Z over W and have the answer in polar form where Z and W are given. So I'm going to remind you that when Z is given in polar format, their product is R1, R2, cis theta 1 plus theta 2. That means write it in this format, multiply the R's and add up the angles. If you're dividing, uh, divide the R's and subtract the angles. So ZW. You want to multiply these two. And to multiply it according to this formula, you're going to write two times two, two times two, cosine of pi over eight plus pi over 10 plus i sine of pi over 10, pi over eight plus pi over 10. Again, we are using this formula, everybody. We are multiplying the two. So we get a four here. Eight and 10 is 40. The common denominator is 40 divided by eight. So let's write it at top of it. So this is 40. This is 40. So this is five pi, four pi. So nine pi over 40. Okay. And that's it. 
Now for the second part, we are going to use this formula. Uh, two and two cancel each other. So cosine of power 8 minus power 10 plus i sine of power 8 minus power 10. And again, uh, it's 4D again. So 5 pi over 40 minus 4 pi over 40 gives us pi over 40. We want to write this in standard form. So I'm going to remind everybody if uh, we have z equals rc theta, according to the Moore's theorem, if we want to raise it to the power, we raise this one to that power, and then we multiply the theta by m according to that. So with that being the case, uh, we want to raise this to the power of 6. So we're going to raise this number to the power of six and we're going to multiply the angle by six. So we are going to use this formula. So we're going to raise R to the power of N. So it's going to have three to the power of six. And then we're going to multiply the theta by N, see? And of course, uh, square root of three to the power of six is the same as three cubed. Uh, And three cubed is 27. Uh, you can leave it like that. So of course, this is 27. You can leave it like that. Or uh, you can write it in this fashion. I want to make sure we understand what happens here. If you want to leave it with 5 pi over 3, is fine. But if you want to go with pi over 3, understand the cosine of 5 pi over 3 and pi over 3 are the same. But the sine in the fourth quadrant is negative. That's why plus, notice, changes to minus. And so we want to write it in standard form. So we're going to multiply this either here or here. It doesn't matter. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Don't forget the negative sign. And so this is 27 halves minus 27 square root of 3 over 2 times i as the final answer. One plus i, we want to raise it to the power of 10. So uh, first and foremost, we want to write one plus i in uh, this format or cis data and polar format. And we remember it was this. We have done it before. You can go back to that question. And so if I want to raise this to the power of 10, I'm going to do, uh, according to this formula, raise this to the power of 10, multiply this one by 10. So when I do that, of course, square root of 2 to the power of 10, that means 2 to the power of 5. This is 450. and I can subtract 360 and nothing happens, right? Because it's in degrees. So remember two pi is the same as 360 degrees. And I get that. As you know, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Sine of 90 degrees is one. So we get 32i. And I hope you realize how, how nice and easy this becomes. Imagine we want to raise this to the power of 10 just the way it is. To end up with this answer, it takes uh, forever. But now using the Moore's theorem, when n is larger than or equal to 1, uh, makes life nice and easy. Uh, z equals 8. And we want to find all the complex cube roots. And we remember that and the Moore's theorem. We are also adding the concept of a root if we have uh, RC theta in polar form a number and n is larger than or equal to two, there are n distinct complex nth root of w. So to take the root, 
we take a root of r, the nth root of r, and then since theta zero over n plus two k pi over n, okay, or 360 uh, k, depending upon whether you use it in radians or degrees, it's up to you unless otherwise mentioned. And so what is k, you have to go zero, one, two, all the way to n minus one. So for example, if it's n five, you go all the way to four. So in this case, we want uh, the cube root. That means we want uh, three and we go all the way to two. Okay, zero, one, two, that's the concept. So first and foremost, uh, let's represent this uh, as uh, R cis theta. And you really don't have to do much because uh, cosine of zero is one. And you recognize that as eight cis zero. As eight cis zero because cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero. I hope you understand if you plug in, you get to the eight. So um, that's why I changed it to W. I'm using this. So I'm just mentioning that I'm using this. But uh, either way, W is that. And we want to come up with the Z sub K using this formula. So the uh, nth root, that means the cube root of this, the cube root of eight, and then theta sub zero. I want to write zero over three and then two k pi over three on purpose, it, uh, although this goes away, but imagine this wasn't zero, let's say I made it, make it up, let's say it was 50, you would put 50 here. So that's why I want you to see it's there. And so since this is zero, it goes away. We write the rest of them, cube root of eight. Everybody knows it to be two. And as we mentioned, we're gonna go from zero all the way to n minus one. Since you want the cube root, zero, one, two. And the reason you stop there, because if you use three, it repeats itself, okay? So uh, now if you plug in zero, one, two, what do we get? If you plug in zero here, you get two C zero. If you plug in one instead of K, you get two C two pi over three. If you plug in two, two C four pi over three. So we plug in. Now, what do they mean? I wanna make sure we understand that because we want the complex cube roots and let's uh, write them in this fashion. So two, C zero, two cosine of zero, as I since uh, sine zero, you know this is one, you know this is zero, so the answer is two. This one we know. So in essence, number eight, we know the cube root is two. Everybody knows that, but there are three answers because in essence, you have X cubed equals eight and it must have three answers. The other two answers are complex. So let's go with this one. Uh, two pi over three is the same as pi over three as the reference arc. So the cosine of pi over three, so let me just, the cosine of pi over three is one half or two pi over three makes it negative one half. Sine of uh, two pi over three in the second quadrant is just positive in the same as pi over three, which makes it square root of three over two. We're gonna multiply everything by two. We get negative one plus i square root of three. So one more cube root is found. And here's the third one. Now four pi over three, that puts us in the third quadrant. So that is also the same as pi over three, but negative. Now in the third quadrant, even sine is negative. So both of them take a negative sign. Now both of them get multiplied by two. This is the final answer. So what is cube root of number eight? Obviously we know the two. It is also minus one plus i square root of three. It is also minus one minus i square root of three. Because you want a cube root, it must have three answers and it does, except the two answers are complex numbers. They're in fact, uh, complex conjugates.
All right, vector V has initial point P and terminal point Q, write V in the form of AI plus BJ, find its position vector, also find its magnitude. This is the way they represent that for uh, modulus or norm. P has coordinates three comma two, Q has a five comma six. So that's, those are not the coordinates. Those are the uh, representation of a vector. So P, a comma B, V, okay. If we happen to have a P sub one with X sub one, X sub uh, Y sub one, P sub two is X sub two, Y sub two. We can bring this such that it, it starts, the initial point starts at the origin. Then this value A is X sub two minus X sub one. And this value uh, B is Y sub two minus Y sub one. So, Here's the synopsis of what I want to tell you. If V is represented with AB is an algebraic vector whose initial point is at the origin, and then V is called a position vector. So a position vector has its initial value at the uh, origin. Algebraic vector, we can write it as AI plus BJ or A comma B with a, a vector sign, A and B. Uh, with a vector format. Okay, it's not the parentheses. A and B are called components of the vector. A vector with initial and terminal points. X sub one and Y sub one, Q is X sub two and Y sub two is equal to position vector. As I was mentioning here, this is the same as this one. And this is the position vector because the initial point is at the origin and the vector has uh, the uh, algebraic expression x sub two minus x sub one comma y sub two minus y sub one. And uh, so the vector uh, x sub two minus x sub one, in uh, this case, uh, five minus three comma y sub two minus one, six minus two, so two and four. So that's the vector. Uh, we can also write it as five minus three times I plus six minus T two times J. So whether we represent it in this format or in this format, take a look at this. It's the same thing, depends how they represent it to you. Now we wanna find the magnitude. And so I'm gonna remind you that the magnitude is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Uh, it is a non-negative. Can it be zero? Yes, a zero vector has a magnitude of zero. And two vectors that are opposite have the same magnitude. And if you multiply it by a number, A is a scalar, and then you can take this out as a, in an absolute value. And so with that being the case, for a vector uh, V, We are going to uh, square the two, square the four, and that becomes four. This becomes 16 squared of 20. And 20 is four times five. Number 20 is four times five, and four can, can come out as two. So we have a two squared of five. I just wanna make sure you're comfortable with that. Now we have two vectors and uh, we wanna find the magnitude of that first using the magnitude formula. And this is four, this is nine, so square root of 13. Uh, we wanna add them up, so just add the components. Uh, negative two i and five i, they add up to three i, these two add up to negative j, that's how you add things up. Okay. So if this is U, this is V. So you start with the first one, uh, the initial, and here's the terminal point. Now you put the initial point of the second one to the terminal point of the first one, and then you draw this becomes U plus V. U plus V. Okay. Uh, if we want to add it to W, then we add the W to the terminal point of U plus V and connect. 
or you can add V plus W first. So pay attention to this uh, format. So two V, that means two times this vector minus three W, that means minus three times this vector. And so we have minus four I plus six J minus 15 I uh, plus 12 J. And so minus four I minus 15 I is minus 19 I, six and 12, 18 J. So we can easily add them up. Want to find the magnitude, direction, angle, and a unit vector in the same direction for this vector of 3i plus 3j. So we know the magnitude, just 3 squared and 3 squared, that's 9 and 9, 18. And we can write it as a 3 squared of 2 because 18 is the product of 9. And 2, 9 comes out as 3, 2 remains inside. Now, when we have a vector, it is its magnitude times cosine alpha i plus sine alpha j, which is the direction alpha. Which is the direction it makes with the positive side of the x-axis, okay? That's what we mean. And so, uh, this point in essence has the coordinates three comma three and tan of theta or alpha is three over three or one and that is uh, giving us alpha 45 degrees so it's important to know for this one three three the components three three will give us the angle of 45 degrees so we can write it in this format where the magnitude is replaced with three squared of three. This is cosine 45i plus sine 45j. So magnitude, direction angle, and now we want the unit vector. Uh, the unit vector is the same vector uh, direction, but must have the magnitude of one. So all you have to do, divide the vector by its magnitude. That's basically what this says. So V is A and B, A is one zero plus B, times zero one AI plus BJ again. Those are the unit vectors along the X axis, along the Y axis. So AI, I is the unit vector one comma zero, J is the unit vector zero comma one. So according to this formula, we are going to divide the vector by its magnitude and uh, the trees cancel each other. So you get one over square root of two and one over square root of two, square root of two over two. By the way, you can prove this is right. If you square this one, if you square this one and you add them up, you must get one and you will. So a unit vector, a unit vector, any unit vector as a magnitude of one. So in essence, we want the same vector in the same direction, but magnitude one, we divided by its magnitude. Write the vector in the form of AI plus BJ, given its magnitude and the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, also find the unit vector, check its magnitude to be one. So here's the magnitude, here's 
the angle. So we are going to use this formula. Now, 120 degrees, the uh, reference angle is 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 is one half, but because it's 120, it's negative one half because it's in the second quadrant and cosine is negative. Now, sine of 60 is positive square root of three over two, so is sine of 120 because it's in the second quadrant and sine is positive in the second quadrant. Now, we can uh, get rid of one half in both cases because 14 is divisible by two, we get seven. So minus seven i plus seven square root of three j. So we found this in the form of a i plus b j. So this one we found. Now we want to find the unit vector. So we have to divide by the magnitude 14 and it becomes minus one half i plus square root of three over two j. And to prove we haven't made a mistake, we are going to raise this to the power of one, raise this to the power of one, and we, we add them up, it becomes one. It must become one. So one fourth, three fourths, they add up to one and square that one is one. So we proved, so okay, and check its magnitude to be one because any unit vector, the magnitude must be one. The magnitude must be one. A plane is flying at a speed of 200 miles per hour on a bearing of north 55 degrees east. The wind is blowing from west to east at 35 miles per hour. Approximate the ground speed of the plane to the nearest mile per hour and the true course of the plane to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we need to have a drawing to make some sense out of this. So north 55 degrees east, that's the direction. The wind direction is east. And this is the true course of the airplane. This angle is theta, and this angle, when we find the magnitude of this vector, that's what we want. We are going north. This angle is what? 90 minus theta. We don't have the theta. All right. Velocity relative to air is the magnitude of V of A, 200 miles per hour. And the angle, if we are going, remember this one is north 55 degrees east. So this angle, the entire angle that it makes with the X axis, is 90 minus 55 or 35 degrees. So this is this angle. Velocity of the wind, we are doing 35 miles per hour, we are going West, uh, east, I mean, and it's uh, zero degrees.
This is the wind. V of the wind. Theta of the wind. W stands for the wind. Let me just write. Wind. Okay. But the angle it makes is zero degrees. If it were going west, it would be 180 degrees, just for the sake of argument, so everybody can see. Therefore, VA is 200 cosine of 35 I plus sine of 35 J. And you have to use a calculator for cosine of 35. It's not a common arc. And you get 163.83 I plus 114.72 J. We do the same thing for the wind with the angle of zero. And we know cosine of zero to be one. And sine of zero to be zero, so we have 35i, and the vector addition, these two are adding up, so add these two, so you add the components. That means these two get added up. This one, there is nothing to be added to that. The j component doesn't have anything for the wind. So this is the velocity v sub g with respect to the craft. So what is the magnitude of that? Square root of a squared plus b squared. So square this one, square this one, add them up and take a square root. And that gives you about 230 uh, miles per hour because it's as nearest mile per hour. We went with the whole number. And uh, as far as the angle is concerned, tan of theta is a, uh, B over A in this case, or 114.72 divided by 198.83. So that means theta is the tan inverse of this number. You put it into a calculator, 29.98, let's say about 30 degrees. So when we go back here, we have the magnitude. 230 miles, north 90 minus theta, 90 minus theta, that means 90 minus 30, that means 60 degrees east, there you have it. Uh, let's remind everybody about the dot product. The dot product of two vectors has many applications with the following algebraic definition. We have a couple of vectors. And so basically you multiply their components. So VW is A sub one, A sub two, plus B sub one, B sub two, where uh, V is represented with A one, B one, and W with A two, B two. The symbol V, uh, dot W is called V dot W. The dot product is also known as the scalar product or the inner product. The result is a real number, uh, is just a number, a real number. It's not a vector. And so we have some properties. Uh, if we multiply them in any order, it makes no difference because the result is a number. If you multiply it by zero vector in any order, you get zero. Uh, if you dot it with itself, it gives you the magnitude uh, squared. If you multiply uh, two vectors, if you dot two vectors and multiply it by a scalar, it, you can do it by each one you can distribute. Uh, this is a plus. And the product, as I said, it's just multiply the uh, components. Also, it can be shown that it's the more, uh, magnitude of the first one times the magnitude of the second one times the cosine of the angle in between. And therefore, if you want to find cosine theta, you can divide this by the product of their modulus or magnitudes and reminding you of the magnitude here. All right, so we have this situation now that uh, we have two uh, um, vectors. 
we want to find the dot product and the angle between the two. So uh, what do we do? It's very simple. You just follow this formula. Uh, four times one plus negative three times two, that's the meaning of it. Uh, four and negative six, they add up to negative two. Remember the result is a number. The result is a number. So first let's graph it. Uh, if this is one comma two, one to the right, two up. This is a four to the right, three down, okay. And here's the angle in between. And we are going to use this formula. Uh, we have to dot them first, we already have that. And then we want the magnitude of this one, which is uh, square root of, uh, okay, four squared and nine is uh, negative three squared is nine. This is one squared and four. So this one, by the way, it coordinates four minus three and one comma two. So if you find those two points and draw the, uh, you know, arrow, that gives you the vector. I'm, I'm giving you the point and how we located, pinpointed in fact. And so the order is not good. Let me just, you know, uh, first I wanna show you this. This should come first. Uh, this one is of course, uh, four square, this negative is three square. This is one square, this is two square. And so what happens, this is 25 and square root of that is five. Then you can multiply this by square root of five over square root of five. And it simplifies to this. Theta is the cosine inverse of that. And this comes from a calculated work. So 100.3 degrees. All right, uh, we want to show the vectors are orthogonal. So let's remind everybody of orthogonal. Two vectors are orthogonal when the angle between them is 90 degrees. Basically, theta is pi over two. And so uh, one easy way is use, show the dot product of the two is zero because remember cosine is V times W over this. So if the product of the numerator is zero, and cosine becomes uh, zero and orthogonal means 90 degrees. You know, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. As you can see, the product is zero. So that's the fastest way uh, to uh, show that. Of course, you can calculate cosine theta but there's no need for orthogonal. This is the fastest way. We wanna show that they are parallel. Uh, two vectors are parallel when the angle between them is zero. The vectors point in the same direction or 100 or theta is uh, zero pi in the opposite direction. In other words, V is uh, alpha times omega. That means one is a multiple of the other. So if you notice that practically you're done, I hope you realize W is two times. If I multiply this one by two, I get this one. Or if I divide this one by two, I get this one. That's the method one, and that's the proof you're done. If you notice that one is a multiple scalar of the other one. The other one to calculate the cosine theta using the formula cosine theta. So let's do that. Now for this one, Okay, so V times W, so three times six, 18, plus minus one times minus two, that means plus two, so that's the numerator, but square root of 10 and square root of 40. This one, three squared is nine, negative one squared is one gives us 10. Six squared is 36, minus two squared is four, they add up to 40. So I'm not showing that because we've gone through that, you should have no problem, but quickly, just as an example, if I want to show 
this one I would say the square root of three squared plus negative one squared. Okay. And so uh, this is what we get. As you know, 400, the square root is the same as 20. And so the answer is one. So theta is cosine inverse of one. As you know, the answer is zero. Because cosine of zero is one. So you have to show that um, either zero or 180 degrees. When you get one or negative one, that's a proof. One or negative one is the proof. This is the faster way. Find the vector projection of uh, V equals I plus three J onto W equals I plus J, decompose V into two vectors, V1 and V2, where V1, V1 is parallel to V and is uh, V1 orthogonal to uh, V. All right. First and foremost, let's draw both the I and three J. So for this one, one comma three in essence, one comma three, and then I plus J like one and one. So that's the two that we have to begin with. Now, as far as the vector projection, I'm gonna remind you the component of V along W may be found by projecting the endpoint of V onto the line L containing W. For this reason, the magnitude of V times cosine theta is sometimes called the projection of V on W and is denoted by projection of V onto W, a vector with magnitude of a component of V uh, projected to W, a, which is a scalar. So V1, which is a projection of V onto W, is the dot product of V and W over the magnitude of W squared times W. And V2 is simply V minus V1. So what do we have to do? Let's get done with the formula. We're gonna multiply V and W. So we're gonna multiply this to one times one plus three times one. And then this one, one squared plus one squared is two. So squared of two. So again, this is a product of one and one, one and three. This one, you're gonna square that times W. So it's two times W because this is two. So four over two is two, two W. So two times W, which is I plus G. So this is the first vector V1 is found. Now this is V2. Now, in order to find V2, we are going to use this formula. And so we get minus I minus J. A two I on it, two. This is two everything. So minus two i minus two j. So i and minus two i is minus i, three j and minus two j is positive j. So that's 
decomposing V into two components, v, two vectors, V1 and V2. The two are orthogonal. Okay, those are components of V. One is parallel to W, that's the concept. So here's what we get. So V1 is in the same direction as W because we want the projection of this over W. Projection of this over W gives you a portion, some sort of a vector, which is parallel to W. This part is orthogonal to that. So in essence, V has been cut into two pieces in essence. 